Welcome to HSK1 Week 3 Review. We started off with talking about some particles, La. La is a super common particle and it has some, some different functions, but its most fundamental one is it indicates some sort of change. And the two that we talked about was uh, completion, that a, a verb has been completed. And it, it doesn't mean past tense because it could be we're talking about the future or, some, or any time. Uh, but it means that the verb has been completed. So, 我吃饭了, I have eaten. 我吃饭了, or you can say 我吃了饭. The la can go at the end of the phrase or right after the verb. And then there's also a change of state. So here the la goes at the end of the phrase and it means that something is now true that wasn't true before. 下雨了 means it is raining, it is now raining, it has begun to rain. So la indicates a change of state or completion of a verb in many cases. We talked about na. Na is a makes a reciprocal question or like a how about this or what about this question. It actually can often be translated what about or um, how about in English and it works pretty pretty well most of the time. If I ask somebody, 你最近怎么样? How are, how have you been recently? And they say, 我不错,你呢? I'm not bad. How about you? And I'm also not bad. The next one we talked about was a. A is awesome because it's basically just a verbal exclamation point put at the end of a phrase and it just intensifies the phrase. Uh, whether it's a positive phrase or a negative phrase, it makes it more intense. And so some examples um, could be uh, if I'm talking about a person who's super tall, I could say, 他很高啊. 他,he,很高. Very tall, a. 他很高啊. Like that. And here we have tai. We talked about tai, dot, 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 la. That's a phrase. Or bu tai. Tai means extremely or excessive or over a, norm, a limit of normalcy. And so the phrase tai, dot, dot, la, so it would be tai adjective, like ta tai gao la. He is, that's another way to say he is, a, he is so tall. Ta tai gao la. Um, the, so an adjective in here, and it's tied adjective la when you're making a positive kind of exclamatory sentence. And then bu tai when you're, when you're um, negating something, you're saying not very or not too. You can say ta bu tai gao, he's not very tall. All right, and then we talked about zai. Zai is a powerful little word that has two very common uh, uses, and they're actually quite different. In that one, if it's put right before a verb, it means an action in process. So, 我在吃饭. 我在吃饭. I am currently eating. So it's kind of like the ing verb, in, or, you know, an ing ending to a verb in English. And so that's one use. And the other main use is that it's, it's the verb in a location phrase where when you're saying the subject of a sentence is located somewhere, or it's also in a location phrase when you're talking about where an action took place. So some examples would be 我在中国, 我在中国, I am in China, 我, subject, 在, it's like a location verb stating where location is, 中国, China. Or if I want to say 我在中国学习中文, I am in China studying Chinese, 我在中国学习中文. So the, the, it can be used to talk about where the subject is or where the subject is doing something, where the location of an action is. Then we have ba. Ba is put at the end of a sentence, end of a phrase, to soften the overall feel of the sentence. Uh, some examples would be 这样不太好吧? 这样不太好吧? This is not very good, or doing it like this is not very good. It's, it makes it softer. Or I think in the, the previous video, 过来吧? Come over here. It makes it, or what, could you come over here? Maybe it would be a better translation. Go lai ba, please come here. Something to that effect. It softens it. Then we talked about do and ye. Oh, I didn't put the character there, but uh, hopefully you have you have that somewhere. Do ye. The do is to is all ye. It's also both of these ver both of these adverbs go right directly before the verb. Always right before the verb. Do is an inclusive phrase, meaning that, the, that all the subjects in the sentence or all of the subject is uh, the rest of the sentence applies to, to all of them or all of it. And yeah, it means also it's, it's including 
the, this subject of this sentence in with whatever we just had previously talked about. So um, if you say, if I say to somebody, Ni Hung Gao, you are very tall, he could reply, Ni Ye Hung Gao, and you are also very tall. You know, or if I want to talk about the two of us, we could say, Woman Do Hung Gao, we are both very tall. Then we talked about Chu Lai. Chu means to go to, um, and Lai means to come or to come to. And so they, they function actually very similarly to English, except for there's no like to after the verb, like uh, to go to, wo chu Beijing, I'm going to China. In English, we have that to in there. Uh, in Chinese, it's just wo chu, I go uh, Beijing. So go and come, they can both be used before verbs to talk about a direction and a purpose, like wo chu Beijing gong zuo. I'm going to Beijing to, I almost said chirfan, like I'm going to Beijing to eat, which that's, I don't know when you, when you would ever say that, unless you live really close to Beijing. What you Beijing going I'm going to Beijing to work, or for work. Lai, I will lie, will I need No, that wouldn't work, because that'd be I meant at your house. Will I chirfan? That means I have come to eat. So, or I will come. And then Qing, or Qing Ni is a, is a polite way to say please. Qing Zuo, please sit. And Jiao means to call or to be called. And is the verb that is used to say, uh, to refer, to, to ask something or talk about something, what its name is or what it's called. And it's a great way to ask someone's name or to ask, uh, how do you say, you know, how do you say chair? Ni, uh, you can point to a chair and say, uh, 叫什么? 这个, this, 叫什么? And you can use that phrase to learn words you don't know, so it's very helpful. So this, we learned a lot this week. A lot of it was how to use specific words, and so a lot of content, a lot of new words. Um, this course is best learned in, um, in the, as, a, as a supplement to other things. We recommend Pimsleur and also um, Scritter. So if you're doing Pimsleur 1 through 4, doing a lesson a day, um, and 30 lessons per uh, unit, and then that'll take, you know, 20 plus weeks. And then Pim's, uh, Scritter for 30, 30, 30 minutes a day, and watch this video and do the, watch these videos and do the, um, uh, the, the exercises. I, I think you'll keep moving, but I hope you can absorb it. I hope you're, you're enjoying uh, your learning. Keep going. It's a tough language, but you can do it, and you can speak Chinese.